G'day guys, welcome to the Freo Newsroom. It's member recognition round this week, so we say thanks to the fans that support us week in, week out. That's right, and the fans have also been asked to wear white on the night, and there'll be prizes given out, and that's all thanks to Programmed. We've secured a top four spot with our win on the weekend. Uh, it was another solid performance by the boys with a 95 point win over the Ds. That's right, and we had a really good spread of goal kickers, 12 in fact, and the one that really stood out was uh, Lee Spur. After 32 games, Spurry finally kicked his first goal. Because that is Lee Spur's first goal in <laughs> AFL footy. That's right, and he spoke early in the week as to why it was that much sweeter. But, um, yeah, during the week, the boys gave a bit of slack because they shot last week and I missed it. Some of the boys are saying I'd probably never kick one, so got a chance to kick one and, uh, yeah, probably went a bit over the top, but I enjoyed it a lot. Have a look at Sauce's head in the background. Absolutely no idea what's going on there. That's right, the big sausage, I reckon he's probably still filthy at Sperry for not passing it to him. Zach Clark was nominated for Mark of the Year in round 21 for this mark. Watch out for Clark to fly oh! over the top! That's right, it was a great mark. It looked a bit like the Tin Man getting up there. He did. Make sure you get onto the website and vote for the Baby Giraffe for Mark of the Year. And that's a massive grab. Oh. Earlier in the week, the boys all got together to have dinner at the Old Swan Brewery and that was cooked by none other than our own Tommy Sheridan. Tommy, tell us what you're doing down at the Old Swan Brewery. Yeah, so I uh, just just head down there every now and then, and a uh, bit of bit of work experience, I guess, and I just enjoy enjoy cooking. So I've uh, been lucky enough to meet Greg Farnan, who is uh, the owner and manager of uh, the old brewery, and he's been kind enough to take me under his wing and teach me a few little tricks of the trade. Now, Tommy, we've seen you in the Purple Kitchen cook-off earlier this year with all the first-year players. Cooking's obviously something that you're very passionate about. Yeah, uh, I guess it started with my host family. We used to have little MasterChef challenges um, down at McNeil family. And then from there, we've, it got pretty competitive in the kitchen and I've actually enjoyed it. So, yeah, just enjoy cooking and um, I thought it was a great opportunity to take and, yeah, it's been good. Mate, Crowell said that his steak was a little bit overdone, but other than that, you did a pretty good job. Does uh, Crozier and Maney expect you to dish up extravagant meals like that every night at home? Uh, well, next time, Garrick, I'll, uh, I'll make sure that I nail it. But um, nah, Crozier is a more of a pretty plain, boring unit. Doesn't really, doesn't really matter what he eats. He's more of a subway man. And Chris, Chris likes a bit of a feed, but um, at home, it's not too uh, spontaneous, as you'd say. It's pretty plain and boring. It's more so when I've got the big dogs like you two are out for dinner. That's when I uh, spice things right up. Good work there, Train. I don't know if you're aware, but I'm actually doing a bit of restaurant critiquing at the moment and hoping to do a bit in the future. Yeah, I heard that, Krause. Um, you do remind me of a bit of a younger version of Matt Preston, the way you wear your scarf and, and strut around. So uh, good luck with that. How, how, did, how do you reckon I went then? Uh, nah, just joking, Tommy. You're really good, mate. Well done, mate. Uh, now, Krauss, you and Tendai paid a visit to PMH last Friday for Red Kite. That's right, Gaz. So I've been involved in Red Kite for nearly six or seven years now, so it's obviously something that's uh, really close to my heart. And love getting down to the hospital and seeing the kids. And uh, obviously, we've uh, been involved in a few quiz nights and these sorts of things. But um, yeah, it's just a good way to get away from football and uh, give something back. And yeah, you really get a lot out of going down to the hospital and visiting the kids. So. Yeah, I can see that there. You guys are holding a brother and sister. Yeah, we're looking. I, I think I look pretty comfortable. A tender looks like he's holding onto a football or something. Yeah, but, uh, sure. <laughs> yeah, he's still got a bit of work to do there. Mate, from all reports, Tendai said you were getting a little bit clucky <laughs> holding the newborn. I was getting a little bit clucky. I think maybe it might have been the other way around. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little. They were very, very cute. Um, I wouldn't want to say that in front of my girlfriend, Sam. I think maybe we might start with a puppy or something like that first, like you did. Yeah, I've got a puppy, mate, and I'm miles away. Yeah, you're Hard miles work. away. <laughs> Hard work. Does Soph know that? She knows. She knows. She knows now. She thinks she knows. She knows. <laughs> <laughs> So as mentioned earlier in the show, if you're heading to the game on the weekend, you'll be encouraged to wear white and you'll be given these inflatable anchors and just by waving them, you'll get your chance to win a $1,000 FPOS gift card. And there's also a $500 FPOS gift card to give away to the person best dressed in white. That's right, and also for the people using social media, there's a chance for you to win a signed jumper simply by posting a photo of yourself with a programmed anchor and use the GoFreo hashtag. Well, that's it for the Freo Newsroom for this year. It's absolutely flown by, hasn't it, Gaz? It certainly has. We'll see you all for season 2014. Me, 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 me. Oh, yeah. I'll do that again. Let's do that again. <laughs> <laughs> Beach fit is better than the polo. Yeah, I didn't mind it, too. Yeah. Ready? Yep. <laughs>